Hi and welcome. My name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about rescuing a washed out landscape image. A little bit of a story. It's basically a medieval lighthouse which gets photographed many, many times on the Isle of Wight off the south coast of Britain. I was in a rush that day. I saw the sun was setting. I was going somewhere else. It was extremely windy and extremely cold. I wasn't dressed for it. So I put my camera into aperture priority and I picked f6.3 and I tied the ISO down to 100. So the only thing that could really change is the shutter speed and that would be controlled by the obviously the aperture. So I dropped it down to 6.3 because I wanted a reasonably fast shutter speed because there'd be so much camera shake for me being buffeted around. So actually it did okay. Maybe I should have gone a little bit higher because I think there's a little bit of a focus issue on that medieval lighthouse, 12th century lighthouse, as a matter of fact. So this is how I got it playing around earlier on. So I'm going to reset it, which is shift command control R or command control shift R. It doesn't matter which way around you do it. So that will reset it back to how it was. So shift and tab will bring up all the panels. Shift and tab again will lose them all. If I just want to bring back the left hand side panel. That would be F7. The best one to bring back, obviously, is the develop panel, which is F8. And that's all you really need to see when you're doing something like this. You want as much screen real estate as possible. Now, first things first, the tower is leaning to the right. It doesn't lean to the right. Actually, it's caused by most people's lenses that shoot this, with a, especially with a sort of wide angle. I think I was on 29 mil on a 24 to 70. So I could have gone a bit wider. That would have made that distortion even worse. So the first thing I need to do is use transform, which is down here. Now it's got nothing to do with lens corrections as such, because that's already been done for me. Because basically it's picked up the profile of the lens. So I could play around with distortion, but honestly, when you start playing around with this, it gets a bit tricky. So basically I'm just going to double click on it, to put it back to hundred. It's transform that you need. Trust Lightroom with its profiles. That's, that's what I'm basically saying. Now I could go through all these like auto and see what it does. It's straightened it up a bit. The best one I would use in this situation is guided. And that means you have to come across, find a straight edge, line up that cursor like so. Now this tower probably isn't perfectly perpendicular or vertical. So I'm just going to go to that edge about there. I think I've got a few focus issues with this image, actually. Probably true. I should have gone to F, let's say, 11 maybe and risked the shutter speed. But it was so windy. So anyway down there and bring that out to the side there. I think that should do it. Yeah, that's OK. It's not perfect, um, but that's OK. Put it back in its holster. So I've used it guided. So that looks reasonable. I've seen people put pictures out of this particular lighthouse and the lighthouse is leaning really badly. I consider that to be bad because you should be correcting that either in Photoshop or Lightroom. Right. So I've done that. What I need to do next is the crop. Are on my keyboard. I want to keep as much of that sun as I can. And I don't think I've got a lot to play with here. So it's going to be two thirds sky and the bottom third will be the sea. I don't think I could do much else with this. I normally shoot with a wider lens because you, you need some interest on the right. By itself, it's OK, but it's not really a good example. Now I'm going to do a little bit of straightening, just a little bit. Like so by dragging outside. And I'm, I'm going to accept that. It's not a shot I would even probably put. Whew, I, I wouldn't put it on the stock agency and I certainly wouldn't show it off as my best work. It's not balanced. That's what I'm trying to say. So anyway, the lighthouse still looks a little bit funny, but I don't honestly think I'll get it that much better. What's wrong? That's blown out. That's bland. That's too green. So you can see there, I think I'm blown out. If I click there, I'm blown out in the highlights and the shadows. You can see what's going on there. The way to see it best is down the keyboard. And then you'll see any blown out areas in the shadows, which I haven't got. But the highlights I definitely have. I think red means you're blown out in red, green and blue channel. Uh, when you see magenta, it's two channels. Uh, when you see yellow, it's up two channels, etc. But I'm blown out, basically. So what I'm going to do first is come down. And I'm always on profile Adobe standard. If you pick landscape, that's fine. If you like oversaturated landscapes, I don't. 
In fact, sometimes I go to Adobe Neutral. Adobe Standard will do. Now, if you play around with the profile and you're using auto, don't forget to use auto again. So if I go auto now and then auto there, this is not affected the white balance, but that is by changing the profile. So if I change the profile to Adobe Landscape, to really get the best out of it, press auto again. Now, I don't like that at all. I'm trying to get that effect in some ways, but I don't like the default uh, Adobe Landscape. Now, it's based on machine learning. Personally, I don't like it. You can see also it's made that, or that shadow area there, blown out. If it's blue, it's blown out. So I'm going to go back to Adobe Standard. I'm going to go Auto again. Clarity. I always need clarity. I'm actually blowing out some of the shadows by using the clarity slider. Dehaze, definitely. I think I need quite a bit of that. Not too much, it shifts colors. Now it's given me a vibrance of 20 and a saturation of six. I might risk the saturation and vibrance a tiny amount higher. It's almost given it a 3D effect, that actually. J to lose that. So J will put those uh, highlight and shadow overlays showing where it's blown out. I can't remember the colors exactly. I think if it's magenta, it's like red, uh, red and blue and stuff like that. But basically it's blown out. So I'm going to turn that off for now and basically take a look at my crop one more time because I think I'm missing out too much of that sun. It wasn't looking right. So that's about right. I think I'm going to straighten up a little bit more as well on the horizon there, like so. Never say never. Right, I've got a little bit of time out of lens flare there. Now I'm going to zoom in F7 for the left-hand side panel and check what zoom level I got. I'm going from fit to two to one. So F7 to lose it. Z or Z on your keyboard, space bar, if you're outside of a tool. I've got a tiny amount of fringing, just a small amount, but I think that will get worse the minute I put on a graduated filter. You can see I'm slightly out of focus here. That's probably due to the focal plane I should have been in, let's say, F11, but it is what it is. Z on my keyboard to come back out again, Z or Z. I've done the crop. I've done the transform. Let's do a graduated filter. I don't think I've ever done a landscape shot without using a graduated filter. M on your keyboard. Shift key kept pressed, drag down to make sure it doesn't wobble all over the place. I'm going to go down quite low and even outside of the photograph. Let me make that decision later. So what I'm going to do now is press O on my keyboard to see the mask overlay. I'm not going to go to the menu because if I do, you probably won't remember it, but if you remember O for overlay, you'll be fine. So that's a red overlay. If I didn't like it, I can go shift O and change it to another color, etc., etc. That's the green one. I might stay with green. So I'm affecting that tower quite a lot. Now with this version of Lightroom, all we have to do is come to luminance here and then bring it up. So it's 0 to 100, 0 is black, 100 is white. So you're only affecting now, I've got 58 there, 58 to 100. So the brighter half of the image, you can see a lot of that green has gone off that tower. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit more as well. Now, the problem with this is I know I'm going to get a bit of fringing if I'm not careful where it's not affecting the uh, tower as much. So what I'm going to do is actually bring the smoothness up. I used to bring it down. You can see I'm encroaching back in that tower. I'm going to stay around 50 because I'm going to paint away the effect of the mask with an erase brush later on. So let's get rid of that overlay a second and let's tick the luminous mask so we can see what's really going on. This will always be in red. Yes, I'm, I'm affecting it slightly. Z or Z on my keyboard. I'm right up against the edge of that actually. I might get fringing when I start playing around with the sliders. Z or Z to come back out. As I said, inside a tool, you must use Z or Z. You cannot use the space bar, it doesn't work. Take that uh, luminous mask off, the overlay off. First things first, I'm probably going to warm it up slightly. Not too much, because it's very yellow there already. And as for tint, I might put a tiny amount of magenta in it. Probably hardly noticeable amount of magenta, magenta, 13. Exposure down, normally that's what you do with the sky, bring it down. If you click in the box, you can use the down arrow to do it. It's much more efficient in my personal opinion. So it's starting to look pretty good. It's a little bit dull at the top there, but it's starting to look a little bit better. Uh, I'll stop about there, I think. That's quite a way down, minus 1.29. Contrast up a bit. 
highlights down a lot because it's a bit sort of too much there. Now I might bring that closer into the blue area, make it colder because I think it looks a bit over the top. Or I could bring the saturation down as well, hit both in the graduated filter and basically in the basic panel as well. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit as well. It's a bit too much for me. In fact, it's a bit too much I've taken off as well. So around there, it's looking pretty good and a bit more on the actual temperature of the graduated filter. I'm going to stop there. Shadows, now I could help that light out a bit by just going to the right here. But I'm taking away from the drama of the sky slightly, so I've got to be careful. Now, put the luminance mask back on and have a look. Now, I think I need to be affecting more of that sky. Now, what I can do is this, F7, come here and change it to something like maybe one to four and drag that down a little bit more. But you've got to be careful with the luminance mask. So um, go back to, uh, go back to two to one. I like two to one zoom. Z or Z to go back out again. F7 to lose the right hand side panel. And then let's take that luminance mask off. Uh, yeah, I think I'm definitely affecting that tower. I'm going to paint it off, but I want more of the sky brought in. Now, I could have played around the luminous mask by bringing it down so it basically affects, you know, more of the sky, but actually I've chosen this method. That's just my choice. But anyway, let's have a look at it. I think it looks more realistic now, the tower, so I'm quite happy with that. I think it needs a little bit more just a tiny amount more warmth in the sky and bringing the exposure down a little bit more and bringing the shadows down a little bit as well. I don't want that tower looking a bit unrealistic, if you see what I mean, because the sun is not shining at it. I've sort of made it slightly brighter. So I'm looking at that and thinking, do you know something? That's as far as I'm going to go. Now, if you put it on brush here, you've got a raise. Make sure auto mask is ticked because it's got a very definite edge. If you go for 100 flow, be careful. I normally start around 60 and the feathers around 50 as well. And what I will do now with the overlay on, O for overlay, I'm just going to paint away any green that's on there. So I'm painting away the effect on the tower. I don't want to get too fussy because I could be here for hours. Right hand square bracket key to make it smaller so I can play around here and there a little bit more. And just a little bit bigger there. Just make sure the brush is sort of half in, half out. I don't want to create a luminance board around this, and that's that will happen if you're not careful. Now I'm on a, a flow of around 60. That means you know roughly one and a bit strokes to lay down 100 percent of, of the effect. So I'm going to put the flow up to really high to 100, it's full amount, and just quickly go down this bit here in the middle to make sure most of it is the green has been removed. The effect of the graduated filters being removed. That will do. So let's just basically close this down now. I don't need to use the graduated filter anymore. And uh, the green overlay I go in a minute, my system takes a long time to catch up. So it's it's okay. Um, I've still got my doubts about the saturation. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more, a little bit more, yeah. Maybe bring the vibrance up a little bit more, but bring the saturation down a bit more. The grass is too green. Now, there's many ways I could deal with this. I, I could put a graduated filter coming up from the bottom and then desaturate it. I could go to HSL and color, use the target adjustment tool to bring down the saturation, but this is a global adjustment. So yes, it's, it's going to desaturate the yellow and green there. Grass has always got a lot of yellow in it, but I'm also affecting the rest of the image. So as a matter of fact, I'm going to double click on saturation there stop that. I'm going to use another graduated filter. I could use a radio filter, but M on my keyboard for a new one, shift key press, drag up to about there. And what I'm going to do there is press O to see the effect at the moment. I'm not going to base it too much on luminance. I'm not seeing T for the toolbar there. That's it. Make sure the mask overlay is on. It's probably on the wrong color, green at the moment, but I, I have to, yeah, it is. So um, shift and O should take it through the colors. That's white, black, and the next one will be red. So I need to bring it up a little bit more to about there. And what I'm going to do is 
I actually am going to use the luminance mask on luminance and just make sure it's not affecting the shadows too much. Bring it up to about there. You can see I've lost a lot of the effect there, so I might bring it back round in again. Just a little bit more. Bring the smoothness up so it sort of affects more of the grass. Um, I'll put up with the tower. Honestly, I will, because it hasn't got a lot of colour in it. So basically, I'm going to do that. Take the O off to, to get rid of the mask overlay. Mm, it's still <laughs> not perfect. I might drag it up a little bit more. Let's have a look at that luminance mask, actually. It's still not good enough. I need actually to make it the full range and I need to drag it up a little bit more. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I'm after, really. So, O to lose the overlay. I'll put the actual, the other overlay on. That's my fault. So, O to lose that one. So, you can't have Luminous Mask and the Ordinary Overlay on at the same time. I think that's as good as I'm going to get it. I'm going to take the exposure down a little bit. Um, so it looks, it doesn't take away. So you can see what I've done. It's like vignetting almost. I don't want that grass being part of the image, so to speak. So I've basically sort of removed it, if you see what I mean. Yeah, I um, think that's a bit too much. I might bring it up a little bit more. Um, that'll do. That'll do. I'm not bothered about the tower and desaturating the tower. It doesn't bother me. In fact, if you put the luminous mask on, you see it's not really affecting the tower. It's only affecting really up to the grass level there. So that's fine for me. So uh, yeah, let's uh, close that down. We don't need it anymore. So I've got rid of that. As I said, I could have used HSL, hue, saturation, and luminance sliders to get rid of that, but I've done it with another graduated filter. Now it's looking pretty bland here. So I'm going to use a radial filter, shift and M, and then I'm going to just drag it out any old how I'm not too fast. You can see it's there. Now, not many people know this because it's not mentioned in any manuals or any videos I've seen. If you move one side, it moves the other side out as well. So you kind of, you know, both sides are moving at once. If you press the ultra option key and keep it pressed, you can basically do it just on one side like so. So I made the filter anywhere and I'm basically going to move it there. And I don't mind it going off the edge. I'm going now to bring the feather up quite a bit, and I'm going to press O to see the ordinary mask overlay, not the range mask one, because I haven't got a range on. So that's, as you can see, it's where my problem is, I need to invert it. That's either apostrophe on your keyboard or tick invert there. I think that's about right. Alt or option key, so I can get a bit more interest up there to drag that side up. And I think I'm on Feather of 67. I think I've really covered it. So let's Turn that off. Oh, and the keyboard. I'm not going to use a range mask. It's not appropriate, really. So what I'm going to do is just give this area a little bit more drama. So click in the box, down arrow, to do it carefully. Do it slowly. Let it catch up if you've got an old system. So it's looking pretty okay there. I think it needs a bit of dehaze. Again, I'm going to come in, up arrow key, to add a bit of dehaze. Around six, I reckon, will be quite, or eight, I've got it on. Saturation again, I'm going to click inside, use the up arrow key to go up like so. My system's very slow at the moment. I apologize for this. I'm probably going to bring that up quite a lot. I'm trying to give it sort of a bit more drama there. And I'm probably going to warm it up as well. Like so. There were sort of scuds of rain coming in, as they call it. I think that's looking pretty okay. Let me press O to see uh, what I'm affecting there. I've got a bit of a luminance glow there. And I might, ultra option key get pressed, just go into that a little bit so I don't get rid of that kind of luminous glow there. And maybe bring the feather down a little bit actually as well. Yeah, um, let that catch up. Let's put that on auto. So when you mouse away, yeah, it's looking pretty okay. Now, I, I could keep going on with this. I think it's a bit too bright up there and I could get rid of some of that sort of massive glow, but I think I've done okay basically. So let's close that down. What All I need to do is sharpen it now. I could play with this image forever basically, but I know masking around, for me, for landscapes, around 70 to 80. I, I've got the ultra option key press so you can see things as I move things around, but my system's a bit slow. So when it catches up on here, where it's white, it's going to be sharpened. And that's exactly what I want. Now, I know I'm going to get a bit of fringing on this lighthouse. 
Um, I could take the radius down a little bit more and actually bring the amount up quite high to around 90 to 100. But do you know something? I might take the detail down a bit as well. I think that's okay. Um, F7 to check my zoom levels. Uh, I'm on two to one. So let's click there. I have got a bit of fringing. Uh, it's very difficult to get rid of because the defringing tools in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw are about green and purple. That's actually a, a brown fringe. Whether it's been caused by the uh, graduated filter, I don't know. So what I'm going to do is Z or Z to come back out, F7 to lose that left-hand side panel, M to find the top graduated filter. And what I'm going to do is zoom in again about there. I'm going to try the defringe. If I bring it up a bit more, I'm going to try more ray as well because that's about color noise and it might help me along the way. Do you know it is actually helping? And I'm going to bring the sharpness up. That might sound a bit bizarre but you can see actually it's making it worse. So if I maybe take the sharpness down on the edge there, make sure the clarity is down a little bit, it might get rid of some of that fringing. As I said, it's slightly out of focus as you can see, and I've got fringing there as well, quite bad actually, but I could bring the defringe up even higher, but I don't think I'm gonna make much difference. It's just the nature of the image really, because I've used a graduated filter and Hard edge objects like this it often gets this fringing. I don't think it's a terrible picture. It's not a brilliant picture. I can't sell this. This is me just experimenting. But you can see I've got a lack of focus there. I should have probably brought the camera up to about F8 at least. And it, even with the wind, then I could have raised the ISO to keep the shutter speed quite fast. Most landscape photographers pick aperture priority. You've got to decide whether you want to tie your ISO down to 100 to get rid of noise. And then, of course, you're at the mercy of the shutter speed being controlled by the aperture. So what you could have done is they'd gone to F8 or maybe F11 and then raised the ISO to something like 400. It was quite dark in places, 4, 500, 600 maybe. And then you'll get a far shutter speed so you won't get much blur. This could have been caused by blur, by you know movement, or it could have been caused by the focal plane not being sharp enough in the focal plane. Um, I was about 40 yards away from it, so maybe I should have raised the aperture. Who knows what that out of focus is caused by? Is it caused by handshake? I don't know. But overall, Z or Z, uh, M to lose that. And just quickly, shift and tab, we now know that loses most things. T to lose the toolbar. I don't think it's that bad. I think it's okay, actually. It's a lot better than it was. Backspace key, that's what it was. We did a transform, radio filters, graduated filters, desaturated the grass, etc., etc. We got it to that. That's not bad at all. Um, I'm not going to do anything with it. It's not good enough, but hopefully you stay with me. That's it, guys. Thanks very much.